Alright, welcome back to Ultra Config Tutorials. So it's been a couple of months since our last video. I've been pretty busy working with my team on some software upgrades for the Ultra Config Generator codebase. If you're curious on what we've been doing, we've implemented the Airbnb linter to enforce a consistent code style. We've implemented the SAML 2.0 protocol to enable single sign-on and we've implemented the new Redux Toolkit library to better manage the global state within our app. If you're interested in web app development, I highly recommend these features and libraries. Anyway, let's get to the subject of today's video. We're going to take a look at Advanced NetConf Explorer. You might have heard of this tool or used it before. It's often abbreviated as ANX. So what is ANX all about? ANX is a graphical explorer for Yang models, so it's very similar to Yang Explorer in many respects. We made a video on Yang Explorer recently, so you're welcome to check out that video too. There are some big differences too though, we'll get to them later. Let's first proceed to install ANX. When we run the application, the main difference between ANX and Yang Explorer will become obvious. So we have two options for installation. We could clone the source code and compile the app using Maven as the ANX codebase is written in Java. Or even easier, we can just build a Docker image and run the application in a container. We'll go with this approach today. I have an Ubuntu virtual machine here. I'm running version 20.04. The first thing I'm going to do is install Docker by running sudo apt install docker.io. Next. Let's start and enable the docker service by running a system control command. I'll now modify my permissions with a user mod command so I can run docker commands without needing to be a super user. Alright, so we now have our docker installation ready. Let's grab the github link of ANX and clone the source code. So I'll run the command git clone and paste in the URL. Next, we want to build a docker image from the source code using a docker build command. You can find the command on the github readme. So that should be built now. We can verify it using the command docker images. There we go. We can see the image here in our local repository. Finally, let's run the image using a docker run command. Again, the command to do so is on the github readme. The image should now be running. We can check this with the docker ps command which lists all running containers. That concludes the installation. The application is now running on port 9269. ANX is a web app, so let's open up a browser and launch the app. My Ubuntu machine has an IP address of 192.168 .1.11 and I'll add a colon followed by the port number 9269. Alright, we've arrived on the home page of ANX. If you've used Yang Explorer before, you'll now see what I mean about the major difference between these two apps. ANX wants us to provide the connection details of a real device. When using Yang Explorer, you manually upload Yang models to the tool. ANX on the other hand pulls Yang models off a device in real time. Some of the use cases for the two apps will now become evident. If you want to go through a bunch of Yang models that you might have downloaded from OpenConfig or somewhere else, you would want to use a tool like Yang Explorer. But if you want to explore the Yang models and the current state of a real device on your network, then ANX is the tool to go for. So let's do just that. I have a Cisco router on my local network. The IP address of my device is 192.168.1.10 and I've enabled netconf on port number 830. Do make sure you enable netconf on your device of course before you try to connect to it with ANX. This is pretty simple for most devices. For my Cisco iOS router, I just needed to add the line of configuration netconf yang. And we also need to supply credentials for authentication. So we're ready to log in now. We can also enable this cache checkbox 
if we anticipate that we'll be accessing this device again in the future. With Cation enabled, ANX won't have to download the Yang models of the device every time we connect to it in the future. All right, let's log in. As we can see, ANX is now downloading all of the Yang schemas residing on the device. And we're in. So this is what the landing page looks like. I gotta say, the UI has a much more modern feel to it than Yang Explorer, so that's a positive for sure. Let me know what you think. All right, let's take a look at what we can do with ANX. We can start by checking out this drop-down select box. This allows us to view the raw contents of any Yang file on our device. For example, let's type in Cisco iOS XE interfaces and I'm going to click on the operational Yang model. We can now click on the view button here. As you can see, this pops out a modal with the raw contents of the Yang model. This can be useful if we want to verify the exact version of a Yang model, or maybe some vendors don't even document their Yang models properly online, so it's nice to have an easy way to get an exact copy of the Yang models in use. Similar to the view button, we can also click on the download all button to download all Yang models off the device in a zip file. We might do this if we want to work with the files programmatically or if we just want to take a look at the files in our own text editor. We have another drop down select box here with a list of netconf capabilities. These are the capabilities that are exchanged when you establish the initial connection with a netconf server. If you've played around with netconf before, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't, Netconf capabilities are just a way for a device to extend the base operations of the Netconf specification. In our case, we can see that we have capabilities for IETF models and OpenConfig models, as well as our native iOS XE models. And underneath that drop down here, we have the GNMI subscribe button. This button allows users to subscribe to telemetry data using the OpenConfig GNMI protocol. The device I'm connected to doesn't support GNMI, so I can't show you a live demo, but what you'd want to do here is just add the GNMI path to the telemetry resource of interest. This could be a path for CPU usage or the operational status of an interface for example. And then when you hit the subscribe button, you'll see telemetry measurements streamed to your browser in real time. So you might be wondering, how could I get the path of a telemetry resource of interest? You could do this in a couple of ways. One way would be to take a look at the raw Yang models and then you could deduce the path of a leaf node by navigating your way through the hierarchy defined by the model. There is an easier way however if we use a tool like ANX. ANX allows us to navigate through Yang models with a graphical interface and then when we select a node ANX will tell us the exact path of our selection. Let's illustrate this. I will now navigate to the operational model for interfaces and I'll click on the IPv4 attribute. On the left side of the screen, we can now see the XPath expression for the selected attribute. This is a really useful feature if you're a network automation developer. These XPath expressions are used in NetConf, RESTConf and model driven telemetry, pretty much with any protocol that interacts with the Yang data store of a device. All right, there's one last feature I wanna show you that can't be missed. Now that we have an attribute selected, let's click on the NetConf console button at the top here. This console allows us to interact with our device using NetConf messages. This is the perfect feature for rapidly interacting with the device using NetConf without needing to write any complex code. Let's now click on the get button. As you can see, this generated a request message for retrieving the operational data that we had highlighted in our tree. If we hit the send button, we can see that ANX executes our netconf request. In this case, we were able to obtain IPv4 addresses from our router. Our router only has one IP configured right now, so that's why the other interfaces don't show an address. So let's say we also want to know the subnet mask and other interface details. Well, that's pretty easy. Let's go back to our explorer tree and click on a few more attributes. We can now rerun our netconf request 
and observe the additional data. And there we go. We can also see the MAC address and subnet mask of our interface. So hopefully that was a good introduction to Advanced NetConf Explorer if you're new to the application. If you give it a go, let me know how it goes, I'd love to hear about it. Before I end today's video, I'll also shout out UltraConfig. UltraConfig is a web-based software application that was built by myself and a few of my colleagues. Our vision was to create a powerful tool for automating the generation of network config. But we wanted to do more than just build a tool that solves config automation problems. We wanted to build a platform that network engineers would love, a platform that puts a huge focus on the user experience. When using UltraConfig, you only need to learn the templating language called Jinja2. Once users know that, they can then build templates to automate config generation for any vendor they like. The software is completely agnostic to equipment manufacturers. It doesn't matter if the device is Cisco, Juniper, Huawei, Aruba, or any other vendor. If you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend that you do. The software includes an API to fully enable end-to-end -end network automation. And the software is free to use with our free forever plan. A link to the software will be in the description. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.